So this is Focus Version 1. These are approximately six feet tall. So this is a man-sized or person-sized machine. The type of machine that this is is called a dense plasma focus, DPF. It's also called plasma focus just to confuse people. Our combination of this sort of machine with hydrogen boron fuel is what we term focus fusion. Focus fusion one is our experimental device which has been operating since 2009 in Middlesex, New Jersey. The basic idea of this device is to exploit a phenomena that occurs in nature, which is quite different than the approaches of the other devices. This phenomenon is called the pinch effect. It was actually discovered, although not named as pinch effect, 200 years ago by Ampere, the guy we named Am Amps after. The pinch effect occurs because when two currents are moving in the same direction, they create magnetic fields, and the interaction of those magnetic fields attract the currents together. So this is a basic organizing principle, not only of electricity, but of the universe. Because whenever you have plasma, you have currents. And if the currents are moving together, they attract each other. If they're moving opposite, they repel each other. Now, I'm going to try and explain how this operates in our device. Our device, in its construction, is one of the simplest devices, fusion devices. In its operation, it isn't one of the simplest. So, it takes a little explanation. The core of our device is two concentric electrodes separated by an insulator. The outer one is called a cathode, it's the negative. The inner one is the anode, positive. There's an insulator in between. Energy from capacitors is dumped on these uh, electrodes, which are inside a vacuum chamber that contains the fusion fuel. Current starts to flow from the cathode to the anode. What happens is a series of instabilities driven by the pinch effect, each one of which makes the plasma denser and hotter. So the first one, which is illustrated in this animation, is the filamentation instability. So you start out with a smooth plasma, and the plasma comes together into what are called filaments, which are dense vortices of current pulled together. So that makes the plasma, that's the first step in making it hotter and denser. Now the friction of the electrons moving through the filaments start to heat the plasma up, just like the electrons in a light bulb filament heat it up. The electromagnetic forces on these currents force them to move to the end of the anode. The anode is designed to be hollow. It has a hole in the middle. So the current actually fountains together inside the hole in the anode. And people, including us, have taken pictures to show exactly how this happens. Well, as that happens, a second instability develops because these filaments are all close to each other and moving in the same direction, so they attract each other. And that produces what people call the pinch, even though this is sort of the second pinch effect. So they're all drawn together, and they merge into a single filament. The next thing that happens is that filament starts to twist up. It becomes coiled, and these coils start to attract each other because they're moving in the same direction. So it becomes more and more coiled, called a kinking instability. Eventually, just like a landline, if any of you still have landlines, that becomes twisted, becomes twisted up in a little knot. And
That knot, which is illustrated in this animation, we call the plasmoid. Inside that plasmoid, the temperatures can reach extremely hot because the uh, plasma has been compressed so much that its frictional forces heat it up. In addition, Another instability produces the acceleration of an ion beam out one direction, an electron beam out the other. What that means is that a lot of the energy in the fusion reaction actually ends up in a directed ion beam. If you have a directed ion beam and you take essentially a sophisticated form of coil, you can induce a current in a circuit as the beam is passing. And with adequate switching, you can make sure that that energy stays in the current and doesn't return to the ion. We've actually taken pictures of these plasmoids. This picture, this dimension is approximately one centimeter. So these plasmoids are only tiny fractions of a millimeter, hundreds of microns across. And we expect to get them even smaller. This is how we plan to get the energy out. Now at the moment, we're still in the research phase. Like other people, we're aiming to prove net energy production in the lab. But if we get that far, what we expect is two forms of energy capture. One is capturing the energy in the ion beam by essentially a high-tech transformer, which takes the energy of motion of these charges and puts them into a current in a, in a wire. The second is about a third of the energy will come off as x-rays. These x-rays can be captured in a multi-layer photoelectric device. So this is very similar to the photoelectric device we use with optics, but because the x-rays are so penetrating, we have to use thousands of layers. But this whole device will only be a couple of meters across. So it's going to be very compact. If we can get it to work, even though it produces only a small amount of energy at each pulse, it will pulse about 200 times a second and produce about 5 megawatts of power, which is enough to power a small community here in the United States. Accelerating Advanced Fusion Energy.